Welcome in 11 episode of our prime matching game tutorial. In today's episode we will implement in-game timer so we'll be able to measure how long it takes player to solve all of the puzzles. We will have a timer in the top left corner of our game and the, the timer will start counting up as soon as the game starts. Okay, so before we get started, I actually want to share with you one of the change of my channel, which is the new banner designed by one of uh, one of my subscribers. And as a thank you for doing that, I want to share a link to his page. So if you guys are interested in designing any of the logo on your channel, you have the YouTube channel, you can check out the, his link. His, uh, as you see, this is his work. So I really like this uh, this banner. And compared to my old one, which I which I did myself, I think this is much improvement. So you tell me what you think in the comments if you like. Uh, better the new one or the old one. Anyway, you can check out his page. I will leave the link in the description below this video. Okay, so let's go back to our to our game. So let's open our project. And first of all, let's om open our scenes and the game scene. Let's go now to the scripts folder and then right click, create C sharp script. And I will call this script timer. And then let's open the script in the Visual Studio. The first thing we want to do is we want to uh, put the using statement. So right at the top, I will put using Unity in Engine dot UI. Okay, let me remove these comments. So first of all, we want to pass the GUI uh, GUI style, so we'll be able to 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 set the style of our timer from within the editor. So I will put public. GUI style clock style private float and then it's gonna be timer the next one will be private float minutes then private float Seconds, okay. So another one, uh, another two variables will be will be uh, will specify where we want to put our timer. So it's going to be private const float virtual width will be equal to 480.0f, and this is basically the resolution of our screen. So theoretically, you could make this this variable public. And set set this value from from the inspe uh, from the editor, but I will just uh, leave it as it is for now. Virtual height is gonna be. I will put the 854.0f. Okay. Then the next variable will be private. Bool stop timer so this variable will be used whenever we uh, we enter the pause menu during the game and then private and it's going to be the matrix 4x4 four four. and I will just call it matrix and then another one will be private matrix and I will just call it old matrix okay so inside our start function, first of all, let's initialize this stop timer to be equal to false. Then the matrix will be equal to matrix, matrix 4x4 dot TRS. So this is transform rotation matrix. Sorry, translate rotation matrix. Okay, so the first value will be our position. So the vector 3, 3.0. Uh, then it's going to be the rotation, so quaternion dot identity, and then it's going to be our scale. So we're going to uh, we're going to set the scale. Uh, so it's going to be new vector three, and then we want to get the screen dot width divide uh, divide by virtual width. And then screen 
dot height divide that by virtual height pay and then on the z axis will be one zero f so this is going to be our position so as you see the position will be will be set based on our screen resolution okay and then reference resolution so you can manipulate this one if you like and then we want to specify the old matri matrix will be equal to GUI.matrix. Okay, so inside our update function, we want to do, we want to put if is not stop timer. If we did not stop it, we want to increase the timer plus equal time dot delta time. Okay, so we want to add the delta time to our timer. And then below, we want to overwrite the on GUI method. So void on on GUI and then inside this method we want to get the GUI dot matrix will be equal to matrix. Okay, so we want to override the, the GUI matrix. Then we want to set the minutes will be equal to mat f dot floor and then timer divide by 60 okay so that's going to be the minutes and then seconds will be equal to mat f dot round to int and then timer and this is going to be the module modulo operator and then 60 and then we want to create the GUI dot label and then we want to create new rectangle and then camera dot main dot rect rect dot x plus 20 you can put any value you like here and then 10 so that's going to be our y position of the label and then width will be 120 and the height will be 50 okay and then we want to set the text so i will just put the empty string for now plus and then we want to pass the minutes dot to string and then we want to put the format so it's going to be zero zero plus colon plus seconds dot to string and we want to put the zero zero as well and then we want to pass our clock style so the clock style which we passed here okay so this is going to be our label so we just just we just basically setting the position based on our main camera and then uh, and then size of the our label and then we basically converting kind of our minutes and seconds to to string to display it and then of course we want to return back our our GUI matrix so GUI dot matrix will be equal to old matrix okay so let's uh, save everything for now and then let's go back to unity and now in our game scene so make sure you you are on the game scene uh, let's click on our main camera let's go back to our scripts folder and then let's drag and drop our timer onto the main camera okay so as you see we have a timer here now okay and then let's uh, let's see the clock style so our clock style we can style uh, we can set the style for our for our clock here from the editor so as a font i will just set the font to be to be arial so you should have this font as well in your unity and then font size i will set 40 and then for the normal i will set the background texture to be texture for our clock so i will just scroll it down and you should have a timer background so if you can't find it there your texture should be in your graphics and then a game ui graphic and then you should have 
the timer background. Okay, so we have our background. You can manipulate uh, some more settings if you like. You can set the offset, the width, the height, whatever you like. Let's just test it if, if this is working. So I will just go back to my scenes and then go back to main menu and then let's save everything. Okay, and then I will press play. And then let's press play. So as you see, our timer is working fine. And it start counting up. So if you go to the main camera, we can manipulate the offset for our label. As you see on the main camera in our timer script, you can change the content offset. So we can just set it more, more in the middle. But remember, if you are in the play mode, when you exit the play mode and you manipulate this value, this value won't be set. So in order to set it, I usually tend to like, like press on these three dots here and then copy component. And then when I stop it, I go back to the games, game scene, click on the main camera again, and then go to the timer, click on these small dots again, and then paste component values. Okay, so as you see, the values which I set are stored and then everything is fine. So let's go back to the main menu again. Let's save everything and make sure the, the clock is in the middle, the, 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 ti the time. And as you see, the position is fine. So we can, we can play now and we have our timer measured. Okay, so that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we will concentrate more on the in-game in UI. So we create the small GUI buttons here to just pause the game and then go back to the main menu. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this, com uh, this episode, please consider subscribe to this channel and uh, leave a like. And I will see you in the next episode.